Uh, this is a rape investigation. Uh, the occurrence is going to be the Starlight uh, Motel. Uh, it's at 13789 Pacific Coast Highway. Uh, we'll use the day of occurrence will be the current day, whatever that is, uh, day is that you're viewing uh, this videotape. Uh, the time reported is going to be about 1.45 p.m. Uh, your time of arrival uh, will be about uh, 1.50 uh, p.m. or 13.50 hours. Uh, what you're going to view uh, initially will be an interview of an employee uh, an office manager at the motel, the person who is the reporting party. Uh, this person uh, received a call from a woman uh, who was in room number seven at the uh, Starlight Motel. Uh, once you view the uh, interview uh, and obtain information for the statement from the first witness, well, actually the reporting party uh, and only witness, uh, you'll next view uh, the victim. You'll get a glimpse of the crime scene uh, and you will uh, take notes and construct a rough draft at some point in time on the crime scene. And then you're going to hear an in-depth in interview with the victim. Make sure that uh, when you document the statement that you have uh, uh, addressed the elements to the crime. So you may need to refresh uh, uh, your memories as to those elements. Now remember, the crime of rape is, uh, is an unlawful uh, sexual intercourse uh, between uh, a woman, not the spouse of the perpetrator, uh, by means of force or fear uh, and without consent. So uh, you may have to make sure that the questions you construct uh, uh, address those elements. And then when you uh, conduct your crime scene investigation, of course, you want to make sure that you document uh, the condition of the crime scene and all the evidence that you collect. Uh, so again, uh, you will next hear an interview uh, from the reporting party, uh, followed by an interview of the victim, and then the crime scene investigation. You know, 9 Lincoln 6, Sam, start rolling towards 13789 PCH, uh, the Starlight Motel. We have a report of a 261 victim at that location. Uh, I'm, I'm Officer Lewis. Did you call the police? Yes, I did. Uh, can you tell me what happened? Uh, yes, we have a young lady. Um, she called me. I was working at the front desk today, and she needed help. She states that she had been raped. So the first thing I did was call the police, and then when I went up to the room, she was pretty upset. Where is she now? She's in a room right now. Uh, what's her condition? Well, she's pretty upset. Um, she's in hysterics at this time. I managed to get a robe to cover her, but
Hi, I'm Officer Lewis of the police department, and uh, I know that you called the police department, and I can tell there's been some kind of a problem. Uh, I, now, I want you to know I've got paramedics that are on the way. Uh, I can see that your face is, uh, is a little bit uh, bruised, but can you tell me what happened? I was raped. Where, where you were raped where? In, in the motel, in this motel. Can you tell me what happened? Yeah. Who, who did it? He told me his name was Howard. Um, he he was black, and he just told it was stupid. I mean, we were eating, and then we he, we were I was supposed to take him out, and he just raped me. Okay, now let's back up a little bit. Uh, where did you meet Howard? I got off of work early. My boss let me out, and um, on the way to. My house, there's this Neptune and bar grill and that I stopped at to have lunch. And I was by myself and I get off and I go and sit down. And, well, I'm going inside and there's not a lot of people there, but you know, there is some couples. And then when I'm walking, I saw this guy at the bar and he, I thought that he was kind of cute. And I sat down and I guess I'm sitting there and I looked up and I looked at him and he looked at me and but then I looked down and he came over and he introduced himself as Howard and he said that if he could join me and buy me a beer and I mean I thought that was harmless and I told him yes and he sat down and we had a beer and we had a sandwich and he told me that he was from San Francisco and he was a computer guy or something and he was here on a conference and that um is that when he told you what his name was he told me his name was howard did he tell you his last name at that time mm -mm. okay go ahead no. and then he, we're just sitting there and just talking about different stuff and then he asks me if um i could take him around because around town because he doesn't know he, it's his first time being here he said so and um if i wanted to go and I mean, he seemed really nice. I, I mean, because I usually never do this, but I, I said yes. And then we, he told me that, that if I didn't mind if he would go to his room and freshen up so we can go, so he could be clean to go out. And um, he told me that he was just, that his room was across the street at the motel in front of the street. No, and that's that a Starlight he, Motel? That's a Starlight Motel. Okay. And, um, he said that he had a rented car, and we, you know, and I, I was kind of hesitant at the beginning because, you know, but like I said, he seemed kind of like a nice guy. So we go over, and um, he just said that if, we, if I could wait while he changes and just drink a beer, you know, and just there, and I now, said... Now, did, you walked across the street from the restaurant, correct? Mm -hmm. And you didn't see a car at that time? No, there was okay. no car. He didn't say. And did he go straight to the room? We just went straight to the room. Okay. And he had a key for the room. He had a key. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. And um, it was in the it was the first floor. I I think it's room seven or something. Okay. Go ahead. And we walked in, and he does as he says. He goes. He goes to the refrigerator and gets a beer out, and he pours it into two glasses, hands me one, and he, you know, and he we start drinking and we just talk. And, um, what, what hand did he use when he was drinking his beer or when he handed you with the cup? His left hand. Okay. And um, he just, he went into the restroom and I, I, and I sat down. No, no, why did he do that, did he say? Well, he, he, well, no, he just said that I thought that he was just going to go in there and just put on his clothes that we were going to go out. And so I just sat down and he went inside and he was there for a few minutes. And then he comes out in his boxers. Okay. And that's that's when I knew it was not right. Yeah. And um, I I I get up, and then he runs. You know, he just comes to me and he pushes me down, and now, I reach. Now where were you when you got up? Were you in a chair? Y yes, I was okay. sitting on a chair. Okay. And um, I I like I get up and he just pushes me down and and then I I reach up and I scratch him because 
you know, I knew, I knew, I knew what was gonna happen. You know, it's not, it's not normal. So, right. I, I scratched him, and then he grabbed me and he, he hit me, once in my nose and once on my mouth, and um, then he just threw me on the bed and he grabbed me from, what, he grabbed my neck, and he told me that, you know, I, I mean, I was resisting, but. He was just on top of me, and he told me that if I didn't do what he told me to do, he was just going to kill me. And that's when I just, I stopped resisting, and, and then he raped me. Okay, now, when um, he told you that he was going to kill you, what, did, he, did he tell you specifically what he was going to do? No, he okay. just told me he was going to kill me. I mean, he now, had... It, at what point... Uh, did you lose your clothes? How did the, how did he? What did he do? Well, he started ripping it out. He just took it off. Okay, so what you're saying is that he reached over and he, he started grabbing your clothes and pulling them off. Because mm -hmm. that's while you were on the bed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, at the point where he has his hands around your throat and he's saying he's going to kill you, uh, is that the point that you said you resisted? Or, or you you stopped to resist? Mm -hmm. And. Now, you may be reluctant to say these words, but uh, I'm going to ask you some very specific questions. Now, I want you to know that um, even though you may be uncomfortable if we're going to successfully prosecute this man, that I have to have certain pieces of information, okay? Now, I, I hope I don't make you too uncomfortable, but I do need to ask these questions, so I'll go as slowly as I can, and you do the best job you can, all right? Mm -hmm. Now. When you say you were raped, you're on the bed and you no longer have clothes on. Are his clothes off at that point? Mm -hmm. Now, d did he have an erection at that point? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when he got on top of you, did he, um, you said he was on top of you. Yes, he was on top of me. Did he vaginally penetrate you mm -hmm. with his erect penis? Yes. Now, about how long did that happen? I assume at that point you're having some kind of sexual intercourse, vaginal sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. And I, did you continue to resist? As much as I could. And what did that involve, the well, resistance? I, was, I wanted to close my legs. Okay. You know. And what did he do in response to that? He just kept opening him with his legs and then he just grabbed me down and... Okay. Now, uh, when he is, uh, he has penetrated you at this point, and after a few minutes, uh, did he ejaculate? Mm hmm Now, following the ejaculation, what did he do? He, he stayed there for a few seconds or so, and he told me that if, that not to call the police, you know, and um, he just got up and went to the bathroom, got dressed, and just, you know, left. And what did you do? I just stayed on the bed. Now, at some point, now, now when he left, did you, did you see him take anything with him? Just his clothes. Okay. I, you know. Did you see any clothes. luggage? There was no, I didn't see any luggage. What, and what kind of clothes was he wearing? He was clean cut. He was, he had like slacks and a nice, what, well, yeah, like a shirt. A button shirt, pullover. It was a button shirt. Okay, and uh, uh, collared, collared shirt. Yes. Tie. Yes. Oh, you had a tie too. You remember the color of the tie? I think it was like blue. Okay, blue tie. Any design on markings on it? No, it was just solid. Okay, but you saw no luggage, and then it, 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 he left. Did he say anything to you before he left? He just told me not to call the police, not to tell anyone he just warned me and you know because he said he if I did he would come back and kill me did you believe him mm-hmm and you were afraid mm-hmm but you called anyway who did you call well I stayed at the bed for you know because, and then I called the manager of the hotel and I told her that I had been raped and to call the police okay and uh, how long after that did uh, did we arrive? At what point was that? About five, ten minutes later or so. I don't 
Okay, let me, in fact, uh, I need to establish some times here. Uh, what time did you arrive at the restaurant? Around 11.30. Okay. And how, about how long do you think you were at the restaurant, uh, both before you started talking with this Howard and uh, at the point where the two of you walked across the street? I would say about an hour. Okay, so what you're saying then is that uh, you got there at 11.30, you were there about an hour, so probably around 12.30 you walked across the street? That's what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, how long were you in the room with him uh, before he became aggressive towards you? Not that long, you know, because it was just, he was just going to get dressed, so around, I don't know, I would say five minutes. Okay, five minutes. And then how long do you suppose uh, the incident um, occurred or, or happened? How long did that last? I'm speaking of the rape. Mm. I, I don't know, I'm ten, 10 minutes. Okay, and then uh, how long do you suppose before he, he left? He left right away, so. All right, and then uh, I think you said earlier that you waited about 10 minutes before you called mm -hmm. the manager. And then about how long before we arrived from that point? Around 10 minutes after. And you saw nobody else in between? No. Uh, I presume the manager uh, came at some point? Mm -hmm. Where'd you get the robe? The manager brought it over. She came over and she gave me the, the okay. robe. So prior to then you had no, no clothes? Mm -mm. These are your clothes that I'm looking at right now on the floor? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I want to... I want to uh, ask you a couple of questions about this man's description. Uh, you, you said he was African American. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go ahead and start from, well, about how old was he? He was around, I would say, third, late 20s, early 30s. All right. Now, did he, uh, what was his hairstyle like? It was pretty clean shaven. Clean shaven? Mm -hmm. So shaved head, like a shack kind of haircut. <laughs> Michael mm -hmm. Jordan, that kind of thing. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, did you say how tall he was? He was pretty tall. He was I, around a little bit over six feet, I, I think. Um, okay. And tall. what was his build like? He was slender, but he was muscular. Okay. Um, so, 30s, tall, slender, muscular. Mm -hmm. uh, clean shaven. Mm -hmm. uh, how about facial hair? He didn't have any. No mustache or beard? No. Okay. How about uh, jewelry? Tattoos? He had a diamond earring on his, I think, left ear. And he had a ring. How would you describe the ring? It, it seemed like a high school ring. Which finger was he wearing it on? On next to his, on his pinky. Okay. Did you see a wedding band of any kind? No. A necklace? No. All right. Um, so no, clean shaven. Mm -hmm. uh, on his body, it's, oh, let, me, let me ask you one more question first before we get to that. How would you describe his complexion? Now, with, with African Americans, there may be a, a, a variation, a range of, of, of skin color. How would you describe his? He was, pr he was pretty dark. He, had, he was dark complexion. Any, uh, any skin condition, uh, acne, uh, scars that you noticed? Well, after he came out of the bathroom in, in his underwear only, he had a scar. I don't know, about five inches wide or something on his abdomen. Uh, it was like that. I don't, somewhere there okay. on his abdomen. On his stomach area? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this again may be a difficult question to, for you to answer, but uh, with regard to his genitalia, his penis, did you, was there anything remarkable, uh, anything that was notable there? Mm, he. Uh, he, I, I think he was not circumcised. Not circumcised? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, below that area in his leg area, any scars, anything noticeable? No, the only scar he had was the one on his stomach. Okay. 
Um, the shorts he was wearing, the boxers, mm -hmm. uh, can you describe those? Yeah, they, they were white. They were the, the, the boxer briefs kind. And right. it, had, they had, it had Hanes. I, so they must have been Hanes on the okay. elastic thing. They were white and the elastic was black. And he put those on again uh, mm -hmm. before, he, before he got dressed and left. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to see this man again, would you be able to identify him? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you're willing to assist in prosecution? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, after he left and before we arrived, uh, did you bathe or clean up or anything? No, I just stayed and, there. And the attack occurred on this bed here in the motel room? Mm -hmm. Now, I noticed that the, uh, uh, the cover is off and just the sheet's on. Is that, was that the condition it was when uh, this occurred? No, the bed was made. He pulled, he just, I So he I pulled know. the covers off? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and you haven't talked to anybody else about this yet? No. All right. Now, the paramedic is going to be here pretty soon. Now, you, you need to understand that one of the, the procedures that we um, use is we, we, t we take victims of this kind of an attack to the emergency room in the hospital, a medical doctor, is going to uh, examine you and treat your, your wounds and injuries to your face. And they also perform, uh, it's similar to a pelvic exam because there is evidence inside your body that uh, we would need to recover. Do you understand that? And mm -hmm. uh, do you think you'd be okay with that? Is that a problem? I, I could do that. And also, uh, now, is there anybody, uh, a family member, a relative, a friend that, uh, uh, once we conclude this interview that you could call and uh, perhaps have somebody meet you at the hospital? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Is there anything else that you'd like to add to this uh, uh, statement uh, before we conclude? Mm -mm. Okay, thank, thank you very much and we're going to do our very best. For her, but have you ever right. seen this woman before? No, I've never seen her before. Now, now there, uh, was a room rented to her? Not to her. A Mr. Howard Becker. He, Mr. Howard Becker was actually the person that checked in. And, and when did he do that? Well, he came at about 10.30 trying to check in, but actually I was not able to get him the room until after lunch when the room was available. And, but I didn't see her with him. When he checked in, uh, uh, was he alone? He was alone. Okay. Um, I didn't see anyone. Now, why don't you tell me about what happened when he checked in, and also, uh, what, what did he look like? Well, when he checked in, um, he tried to check in at about 10.30. It was too soon for anyone to check in. The rooms were not available. We had no one else check in for the day yet. So I suggested he go to Neptune Bar and Grill across the street. And when he came back, um, I took down his information. He gave me $79.00. So therefore, I didn't need to see his ID. That's our policy. We don't take ID to check them in. And, but if you look at the registration form, he did have a car, okay. so did, I didn't see did, it. Did you see the car? No, I didn't see the car. Okay. Just him. All right. Now, uh, uh, how, what did he look like? Well, he was a very tall African-American. That's how I remember him. He was very tall. He had a diamond, a large diamond earring in his left ear. I remember that. And he had a very large king nose. And he was very well cut. So we had no one else check in. So yes, he was very distinguishing looking. He had a very clean shaven hairdo. And he was real dressed up. He works at Ac Acme Computer, so I, Computer Company, so I didn't think nothing of it. OK. Uh, now, did, was he carrying any luggage with him when he checked in? I didn't see any luggage. So. Uh, just to kind of summarize then, uh, he showed up about 1030. Yes. Uh, you checked him in and he signed a, uh, your register. Uh, had nobody with him, no luggage. He gave you $79 in yes. cash. 
your policy is that uh, you don't, uh, for cash customers, I presume, you don't need to see ID. Yes. And what time did you tell him to come back? I told him by the time he was done with his lunch to just come back. He had checked in. I took all this information before he left. And, and you've never seen him before? No, I never seen either of the two before. And you mentioned the car, and uh, but you never saw the car either. No. Okay, and no luggage. Uh, could you identify him if you were to see him again? I could because we had no one else check in at that time. Okay. Now I need to ask you two more things. First, uh, does your does your motel here have a surveillance uh, camera in the yes. office area? Yes, we do. All right. Now may I have a copy of you, the uh, tape? You're welcome to it. Okay. And the second thing is, I'd like to see the uh, registration form. Okay. I can get that for you. Now, Ms. Gaden, you had earlier mentioned that uh, the man who rented this room was tall. Uh, can you estimate how tall he was, in your opinion? Well, he was taller than the average tall, so I would say he was about six. He was more than six feet, so he had to be about six one. Was he taller or shorter than I am? Taller than you. Okay. Well, I'm six four, so. Six four. Wow. That would make him. I say six five. Okay. Now, what kind of a build did he have? He was slender built. Seemed like an athlete. Really. Athletic, uh, yeah. slender. Okay. Uh, now, you mentioned uh, he said he was cut. What, what kind of clothing was he wearing? He was in business attire and a business suit. Uh, color? He had a tie, um, more of a dark, dark charcoal looking suit. Charcoal suit. Uh, could you recognize the, uh, uh, the make, uh, the manufacturer, uh, the, the style? It looks more of an Italian cut. I would say Armani. Okay. And, and he was wearing a jacket? Yes, he had on a jacket, a business and, jacket. He had the tie on. Oh, uh, can you describe the tie? The tie was a red and blue tie. All right. Um, now, was he, did he have any facial hair? You mentioned that he was clean shaven on the head. Did he have any facial hair? No facial hair at all. No beard, mustache? No. Okay. Uh, did you notice any other jewelry? You mentioned his earrings. Did he have a necklace, a watch, rings? Now that you say that, I, he might have had a watch on when he Could, was filling out the paperwork. Yes, he had on a watch. What, how would you describe the watch? It was, a sil it was silver, but I, I couldn't take the make. I couldn't figure right. out the well, make. And what hand was it on? It was on his left arm. Okay. Because he wrote with his left arm. That's how I noticed Oh, he wrote it. with his left arm? Yes. So he's left-handed left then? Left-handed. Okay. And you, uh, let's see. I had only w one more question. Uh, and No, actually, you covered everything. I think that's just about it. Okay. And you did mention that you could identify him again if you were to see him. Yes. Now, is there uh, anything else you'd like to add, anything I, I should have asked you uh, either about this crime or, or, or the suspect that uh, you, you checked in? No, I had no idea he was bringing anyone. That's it. I want to remind you that uh, uh, when you saw the motel registration form, uh, there was uh, certain information listed on it, including the, uh, the name of the person who rented uh, the room where the crime occurred, presumably the suspect. Uh, and also there was some employment and some vehicle information listed. Uh, the vehicle license number that was listed on the form was 1ADE, and that's Adam David Edward 415. It's a California license plate. And the car listed was a uh, 92 Oldsmobile. Now, I wanted to point out that what you would normally do uh, as a, in a police investigation is you would run uh, that license plate. You'd run it for registration and for any wants or warrants uh, or holds that are on that plate. So we're going to imagine that that's what we did. Uh, we checked with dispatch, ran the plate, and the reply we got was this, no record on file. So we run the plate and the reply is no record on file. So I'd like you to think about that and then imagine uh, or wonder uh, why there's no record on file for that license plate, and then we'll uh, uh, discuss that in a few minutes. This is room seven. 
of uh, the Starlight Motel, 13758 Pacific Coast Highway. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, we would have interviewed uh, the victim, and we want to start going through uh, the evidence that's in front of us. Uh, as you can see, there is uh, some uh, dishevelment in the room. Um, the largest item in front of us is the bed. There's blood on the front end of the bed. Uh, there's a sheet and uh, towards the bottom of the bed along with some other unknown uh, substances. Uh, just uh, to the left of that table, uh, and that would be, uh, let's see, that would be west uh, on your crime scene sketch, uh, is a table with a beer uh, and a couple of cups uh, and a couple of chairs. And then at the foot of the table, uh, there's the blanket that presumably came from the bed and several items of clothing. Uh, I can see a pair of women's panties, a bra, shirt, and over in the corner by the door, um, looks like a pair of trousers with some blood stains on it. And just to uh, the right of that is a card, which we're going to talk about later, a piece of paper. Uh, by the way, that door that you're looking at is the uh, entrance door to the motel. Um, I'd like to focus on the bed a little bit uh, so we can zoom in um, and pick up some of the uh, stains. Um, you can see the blood at the front of the, st uh, the bed, then working our way down toward the back end of the bed uh, would be some uh, additional stains, including uh, some possible semen stains. Uh, we're going to collect that sheet and uh, remember to air dry it and uh, package it in a paper bag. Uh, you may recall that biological material has to be packaged in paper, not plastic, uh, so the cellular structure or the DNA uh, is not affected. Uh, swinging back to the table just to uh, the left of the bed, uh, there are two cups. Now the table on, uh, the, the cup on the right hand side, if we can get a, uh, that will be the other cup on the right hand side. You may notice there's uh, what appears to be lipstick uh, stains there. Uh, we're going to make an assumption that is the victim's cup. Uh, also notice there's a smudge right below that. We have dusted for fingerprints, by the way, on these two cups and uh, we've retained uh, uh, fingerprint, uh, latent fingerprint lifts from both cups. Uh, in between the two is a uh, bottle of beer, 12 ounce bottle of Coors Light. We have also dusted uh, that for fingerprints. We found uh, several latent fingerprints which we lifted and then the cup to the left of the beer. Uh, we're going to make a guess that this is the uh, suspect's cup. We've obtained some uh, fingerprints, identified some latent fingerprints, and we're going to lift those. Uh, in addition to the fingerprints, make sure that you collect the cups and the beer bottle. We may have some uh, DNA specimens from saliva on the uh, suspect's cup, uh, and we want to package that in uh, paper, uh, don't forget, because of the DNA. Uh, moving our way to the floor in front of the bed, there is a blanket that presumably was tossed onto the bed at the time of the attack. Uh, there are some blood stains on that too. Um, we are going to collect that blanket. Uh, in the foreground, uh, just on the left side, is a uh, plaid, uh, gray-blue plaid shirt. Uh, when you collect it, you're going to notice uh, that the buttonholes have been torn and there are a couple of buttons missing. Uh, that's important uh, corroboration, by the way, uh, the condition of these clothing items uh, supporting the victim's uh, statement of lack of consent. Uh, just to uh, the right of that shirt is a uh, pair of uh, pink or salmon-colored panty, women's panties. They are also torn. Uh, we need to remember to collect that. Uh, moving a little farther over uh, is a beige uh, bra. Uh, also torn, uh, we will collect that. Near the entrance door uh, is a pair of shorts on the floor. Um, it's actually between the bed and the door. Uh, with blood stains, these shorts are also torn. Now, with each of these items of clothing, they need to be bagged separately, air dried if they have blood on them, and uh, the only one that I can see that has blood on them on it is the uh, short. Near the uh, door on the floor, is a uh, what appears to be a business card. Uh, it says on the logo, State Farm Insurance. 
Uh, the name listed is Donald McLean, agent. Uh, and you can read what it says, but home business auto, there's a phone number there, uh, 415-271-5216. The address is 1200 Sutter Street, uh, San Francisco, California, 90842. Now, um, you may recall that the registration uh, uh, slip that uh, the reporting party had uh, indicated a different name, uh, Harold Becker, but the address listed was also on Sutter Street in San Francisco. Dr. Bayless, I'm Officer Lewis from the Police Department. Uh, uh, you conducted a uh, rape examination of our victim that we had brought here? Yes. And uh, could you please tell me uh, what did you find? We found vaginal tearing. Also, we found semen, which there's a sample of in the rape kit, and bleeding. Okay. And did you uh, you have the rape kit completed and ready to uh, provide to us? Yes, I do. Okay. Thank you. Additionally, other items of evidence that we want to remember to include uh, in our investigation and our report would include the uh, registration form uh, from the, uh, uh, the, the motel. Uh, there is also a CCTV surveillance video that the reporting party uh, uh, talked about. We want to collect that because that does have, uh, 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 does capture uh, the apparent suspect at the time of registration. Um, additionally, um, then the victim has been transported uh, to the hospital for a, a rape exam and the doctor, as uh, you, you have seen on this videotape or will have seen, uh, is going to provide us with the rape kit that should be uh, booked as well. And uh, uh, I would also take the robe that she's wearing as possible that she could be transferring some material from the suspect uh, to that robe. At this point, it might be a good idea to go ahead and uh, summarize the investigation, uh, starting with the beginning and uh, hitting the key points. And I also want to go over uh, some of the forms and the narrative. Uh, in the beginning, uh, you were given an overview of the crime situation, and we led off with a dispatch of um, you to a report of a rape, a 261 PC. Uh, at the Starlight Motel. Uh, now, on screen, you will have seen uh, the map, uh, and you also have a copy of the map so you can follow along. Well, you'll be required to uh, create a drop wall sketch, and you need to know the dimensions of the room, uh, room number seven. It uh, is 25 by 25. At the initial observation, we encountered the reporting party. Uh, she's the motel manager, and you recall she received the phone call um, initially from, uh, apparently, the victim from a uh, hysterical female in room number seven. Uh, we then took a look at the crime scene, and we talked to uh, uh, the victim. Uh, you, you have to pay attention to the injuries uh, that the victim was displaying uh, for several reasons. One, it's uh, a significant evidence. Uh, she had a bloody nose, bloody mouth bruising to her cheek. She also had bruises to her neck. Uh, we want photographs of those. So on your photo log, make sure that you include um, photographs of those injuries. And in the narrative, uh, you can just briefly summarize the facial injuries, but I would like you to comment on that in the initial observation. Um, once we leave that initial observation, we're go we go into the victim's statement. You may recall she talked about uh, how she met this man. Uh, he identified himself as, uh, as Howard. Uh, he talked about being from out of town, uh, from the San Francisco area. Uh, he was in computer, uh, the computer business of some type, and uh, essentially he was uh, uh, trying to get her to agree uh, to show him around town. Uh, after a short while of uh, eating lunch and drinking, they he talked her into walking across the street to uh, the Starlight Motel to his room, room number seven. Now, she never saw a car and she never saw any luggage. Uh, they went straight to the room and he did have a key to that room. 
They went in and after uh, some, some conversation and a little bit of drinking, uh, he said he was going to go to uh, the restroom and get changed so they can go out on their little trip. When he came out, he was wearing his shorts. And of course, at that point, uh, she realized something was wrong and tried to get up. And he pushed her down, uh, punched her in the face, uh, ripped her clothes off, and uh, proceeded to rape her on the bed. Uh, she did resist. Uh, and eventually, she submitted because of, uh, of fear. When he was done, uh, he got dressed, and he made one more threat before he left. And uh, he left the room. She waited for a few minutes before she called the reporting party, which uh, was the uh, manager, and asked that uh, the manager call the police. Uh, we then looked at the uh, crime scene investigation. Um, you also uh, saw the uh, uh, statement from the emergency room doctor. So recall that the victim was transported uh, to the uh, hospital uh, for a rape exam. Now, the kit that the doctor gave you will be an item of evidence uh, on your property report. Uh, and by uh, a way of reminding you, in that kit would be uh, uh, various slides and uh, combing, some trace evidence, hair, hairs, and some biological material. The doctor said that there was uh, trauma, there was vaginal tearing, and there was the presence of semen. Please be careful and do not write that the doctor said she was raped. That's not what was said. In uh, short, then, that is a summary of the investigation. Uh, you have been taking notes. Uh, remember the sections in your narrative. Uh, you're going to start off with your preliminary information. That's the dispatch, your initial observation, um, your victim statement, your reporting party statement, the crime scene investigation, and the conclusion. In the conclusion, you need to tell me how this crime was committed, when it was committed, by whom, and whatever uh, the method of operation was. Um, hopefully, uh, you noted the license number information uh, from the registration form because in uh, reality you would have run that license plate through the system. When you did, uh, you would have gotten a return from Department of Motor Vehicles, no record on file. And that's significant information. Remember also there seem to be two names involved here. Uh, the individual that we are looking for registered as Howard Becker. However, the name we found on the business card uh, inside the door was Donald McLean. Uh, similarities, yes there are, uh, two addresses on Sutter Street, uh, both addresses in San Francisco. Um, that should be uh, uh, enough information for you. Uh, you can now uh, write the narrative. The forms, just the standard, crime report face page, uh, the MO page, uh, suspect page, uh, photo log, and the property report. You can now begin.